Rhawn da, fi yw Lynedd Morgan, gwenidog iachyd a gwasanaethau cymdeithasol yn Llywodraeth Cymru a heddiw. Yn y mino gyda fi mae Dr. Jill Richardson, dyrprwy prif wenidog y meddygol ein rhaglen brechlin COVID-19. A dwi am rhoi gwybodaeth diweddarau chi am ymddangosiad yr amrywiolyn coronavirus newydd, yr un sy'n cael ei adnabod fel Omicron. A'r camau un i'n cymryd uh, yng Nghymru i'ch diwg gael eich chi. Bydd Jill yn sôn am sut yn i'n mynd i ehangu yn rhaglen brechlin, uh, yn un olach yng Ngor diwedd araf y uh, cydbwylgor ar imuneidio a brechu, uh, ac felly uh, mi fyddwn ni yn rhoi fwy o wybodaeth ydych chi am y sefyllfa. I want to update you about the emergence of the new coronavirus variant called Omicron and the actions we're taking in Wales to protect you. Jill will set out how we're expanding the vaccination programme in line with the latest advice from the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation. Now, the World Health Organisation designated this new variant of coronavirus, now called Omicron, a variant of concern on Friday. This was based on evidence of several mutations which have an impact on how it behaves, for example, on how easily it spreads or the severity of illness it causes. Now, over the weekend, cases of the Omicron variant have been identified around the world, from Australia to Israel, throughout Europe and in Canada. There have been 14 confirmed cases in the United Kingdom, but more are under investigation. There are currently no reported cases in Wales, but we should be prepared to see cases being identified. Mahon and that plugyad divrival arall in a pandemic, ak in 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 camri o divri. Llawer o hyd in idem yn gwybod am yr amrywiolyn hwn. This is uh, another serious development in the pandemic and one we're taking very seriously. However, there's a lot of we don't know about this variant and we won't know the answers until more research has been done. The European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control has warned this is the most divergent variant so far. To help keep Wales safe and the people in Wales safe and to slow the spread of this new variant, we've put in place a series of measures over the last few days. The main focus of these have been international travel. In line with the action taken in the rest of the United Kingdom, we've placed 10 Southern African countries on the red list for international travel. Now, this means that anyone travelling back to Wales from these countries will have to complete 10 days of quarantine in a managed quarantine hotel, and there can be no exceptions to this rule. In addition, vaccinated travellers coming back to the United Kingdom from a non-red list country will have to self-isolate and take a PCR test on day two of their return. They can leave isolation if they have a negative result. If the test is positive, they'll need to isolate for 10 days and people they live with will also need to self-isolate until they have a negative test. The rules for unvaccinated travellers are not changing. They must self-isolate for 10 days and take a PCR test on day two and day eight. These new rules replace the requirement for vaccinated travellers to have a lateral flow test when returning from overseas and is another step to more rapid sequencing to help prevent the variant from spreading in our communities. As you may be aware, the First Minister and the First Minister of Scotland have jointly called the UK government to go further and to reinstate the need for a day eight PCR test for vaccinated travellers as an added safeguard. The Education Minister last night strengthened the use of face coverings in secondary schools, colleges and universities for the rest of the winter term. All staff and learners should wear face coverings while indoors where physical distances can't be maintained. We will change our self-isolation rules so everyone identified as a close contact of a confirmed or probable Omicron case in Wales will need to self-isolate for 10 days regardless of their vaccination status or age. Now we hope that these actions, when taken together, 
with all the other protections we have in place in Wales will help to slow the spread of this variant. Now, Jill will now explain how we'll be prioritising vaccination as we expand the booster programme to keep people in Wales safe. Jill. Thank you, Minister Jill Hanbauer. As the Minister has explained, we are urgently expanding the vaccination programme in Wales in line with the latest JCVI advice. The chair of the JCVI has indicated that we get the greatest benefit for vaccines if they are deployed before any future Omicron wave starts. We will therefore be making boosters available to all adults in Wales, which means expanding the programme to include all 18 to 39 year olds who have had the first two doses of the vaccine. We will vaccinate older people and those in at-risk groups first and have been making excellent progress with more than 840,000 booster vaccines given to date. The majority of people aged 65 and over, people living and working in care homes and frontline NHS workers have already had the booster vaccine. The JCVI is now recommending that we speed up the rollout by reducing the minimum interval between the second dose of the vaccine and the booster to three months. We will follow this advice and reduce the interval as quickly as possible. We will also offer the booster to all people who are severely immunocompromised, who have completed their primary course of three doses of the vaccine. And the JCBI has recommended that all 12 to 15 year olds are offered a second dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine at least 12 weeks after their first dose. We will also follow this advice. Expanding the vaccine programme will be challenging. It will mean increasing the speed of the rollout and increasing the workforce to ensure we can offer boosters and second vaccines to everyone who is eligible. We have the supply of the vaccine and we are working with the NHS at speed to put plans in place this week. We are looking at creating more capacity in clinics, using drive-through models, working with primary care colleagues wherever we can, and with other public service staff who are trained vaccinators to make sure that we can protect as many people as possible. As the Minister said, there is a lot that we do not yet know about this variant. But increasing the protection that vaccination gives us, both individually and collectively, as we face the prospect of a new and serious variant and a possible further wave of disease will help. It is never too late to be vaccinated. I would particularly urge everyone to come forward for a vaccine that has not yet had one or two doses. It doesn't matter if you've already had COVID-19 infection as the vaccine will give you longer lasting protection against the virus and especially as it looks like there is a higher risk of reinfection with the new Omicron variant. Minister, I will now hand back to you. Diolch Jill. A diolch i'r tîm brechu am yr hosweith caled un amddiffyn ni gyd. Mae hwn yn gyfnod pryderus i bob un ohono ni, ond ni wedi gobeithio gallu ni ddechrau meddwl am ddyfodol heb gysgod y pandemig uwch ein pen ni. Diolch yn fawr, Jill. Thank you to you and the vaccination teams for all the hard work you're doing to protect us. This is clearly a very worrying time for us all. We had all hoped that we could start to think about a future not overshadowed by the pandemic. But we now face the uncertainty about a new variant of coronavirus just before Christmas. Never has there been a more important time for us all to work together to protect our families and our loved ones. We need to keep doing the small things which have kept us safe throughout the pandemic. That means getting vaccinated, isolating and getting tested if we have symptoms, taking regular lateral flow tests, especially if we're going out to busy places, meeting people outdoors if possible, keeping our distance when we can, washing our hands regularly and wearing a face covering. Jill and I will now take questions from journalists and all the questions will be broadcast on our social media. So I'll start with Owain Clark, BBC. 
Uh, Prelang, uh, thank you very much. And this is a question to both of you in the first instance. Um, but if the uh, minister could also reply in Welsh, I'd be very grateful. I'm interested for more details, if you could, on how to how you are going to practically boost the booster campaign, especially in terms of logistics, but maybe more importantly, staffing, given all the, uh, the pressures the NHS is under at the moment. So, for example, will we see a return of those volunteers that were working in the first wave, first wave healthcare workers, students, and so on. And your target before was to vaccinate most of the previously eligible people by the end of the year. Given so many more people are eligible now, what's the new target? Okay, are you okay to start? Shall I start? <coughs> so, um, yes, I mean, it's an incredible challenge. Our program is a huge and complex program. Uh, many people's invitation letters have already gone out right up to the middle of December. So it's a really important point that we will need a real call to arms for workforce for this. And that will probably include volunteers. It will almost definitely include third sector organisations that helped us previously. We had tremendous help from uh, our other emergency services last time also from um, the fire service and others. And we'll be looking at uh, additional capacity for bank staff. We'll be looking at students um, assisting also in clinics. And of course, there are other roles that are not actually vaccinators. So um, roles to do with administration, roles to do with uh, looking after people once they've had their vaccine. So we will be having a real push and in fact had a workforce summit um, just on this issue anyway last week um, in recognition that we are going to need to increase um, our workforce for the, the campaign. Uh, um, Sicker high a bydd uh, byddin newydd o bobl yn gallu dod i'r adwy yn helpu ni uh, gyda'r sefyllfa yma. Um, bydd, mae rhai gwahoddiadau eisoes wedi cael ei, uh, ei estyn i bobl i ddod ymlaen. Uh, rhaid ni wedi mynd i ganol rhagfyr eisoes. Ond mi fyddwn ni'n galw ar myfyrwyr, mi fyddwn ni'n galw ar llywodraeth leol. Uh, mae lot o drefniadau eisoes mewn lle ond bydd y rhaglen yna yn cael ei datblygu yn ystod y diwrnodau nesa. Eisoes mae'r tîm wedi bod yn gweithio trwy'r penwythnos ar newid y sefyllfa a, a deall bod angen i ni uh, ailwampio a gwneud pethau mewn ffordd uh, y gyflymach a, gyn, um, a gan gymru mwy o bobl mewn ystyriaeth. This is going to be a huge mobilisation campaign. Um, everybody will put their shoulder to the wheel. Uh, there's an understanding that this uh, will be something that we'll try and get done as soon as possible in before we reach that uh, possible wave that may hit us. In terms of targets, these are still being uh, worked up. Uh, the team has been working all weekend, as I say, uh, but those once we know uh, what we have at our disposal in terms of teams, then we will be able to give you more detail on that. Uh, and this one is perhaps more so for the minister. Uh, what's your message to people who might be considering, you know, just to be safe now, should I cancel my Christmas party? And given that your own COVID control plan says a move to COVID urgent would be designed to deal with any sudden changes, including the emergence of a new fast spreading variant, does the present situation fit that criteria? Are you considering moving to COVID urgent? And if so, what would be the first rest restrictions you'd be considering? Uh, th thanks very much, Owen. And uh, just to be clear that we will be, of course, considering these new changes uh, in the light of, of our 21-day review, which will be happening a week on Friday. Those conversations have already started. This, as you, I said, there's uh, still a lot we don't know about this variant, and we'll be keeping an eye on the situation over the next few weeks. Uh, so uh, it's too early to say yet. Uh, what the situation is likely to be as we enter the Christmas period. But I would urge people to act with caution over the Christmas period and, and to take very seriously uh, the, the situation and the threat, indeed, of, of mixing with other people indoors during this time. It is something that we need to take seriously. 
Uh, Omicron has not yet arrived in Wales, but it is simply a question of time before it does. Mi fyddwn i yn edrych ar y sefyllfa yn wyneb y newidiadau ni neu pob uh, 21 diwrnod. Uh, mi fyddwn i'n ystyried y newidiadau wrth gwrs gyda'r feriant newydd yma ac yn cymryd hynny i mewn i ystyried pam bod ni yn ystyried os fydd angen cyfyngiadau newydd. Uh, mi fyddwn i yn uh, gofyn i bobl i gymryd pethau o ddifri pan mae'n dod i uh, partio nadoleg ac i ystyried uh, gyrla hyn fod yn yn uh, sefyllfa sydd uh, yn beryglus uh, wrth bod ni ddim yn gwybod i baradau fydd uh, y feriant yma yn symud yn ein cymunedau yn ystod uh, yr wythnosau nesaf. Felly uh, cymryd ein uh, uh, pethau sy'n mewn lle yn barod uh, mewn i ystyriaeth, ond hefyd peth mwy a pwysig yw i, I gymryd uh, 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 um, amrywiolyn o ddifri ac i sicrhau bwchiau yn cael y frechlyn. The key message here is, if you have not been vaccinated, your best protection is to get, uh, to get vaccinated as soon as you can. Adrian Masters. Thank you, Minister. Um, and I, I think this is probably a question for, for both of you. It's really um, to, to get... Um, uh, to, to nail down more of what you were saying in response to Owain, um, which is amongst the things that you're considering, the measures that you're considering, are you considering measures that we would call lockdown or fire break or circuit break or any of those terms that have been used over the years? So in other words, things like uh, asking people to work from home, closing schools um, and, and those kind of very restrictive measures. So could, could you say whether specifically those things are on the table and related to that whether or not you have any concern with, about people complying with those uh, kind of demands well i think it's it's too early to say um what what we're going to decide in the next few weeks because uh, literally we've had days to uh, assess the situation and i think we have to be aware that omicron is, is not in our communities and we have a responsibility to keep our society open as long as possible um, but obviously, uh, if the situation changes, we will have to change uh, along wi with that. So, uh, of course, we are still encouraging people to work from home. Uh, we are encouraging people to wear uh, face coverings in public places. And we would urge people to comply with those requests. Uh, in fact, they're not requests, they're laws. And uh, it is important that people take those seriously. We're not doing this for fun. We're doing it to keep you safe. And it's really important that people understand their responsibilities, not just to themselves, but to their fellow human beings in Wales. Adrian? Um, thank you. And um, the, uh, the, the, this now sounds like uh, that I'm asking the opposite. Um, but um, uh, uh, Joe Biden has said there's, there's no need to panic. Doctors in South Africa say that, uh, or certainly suggest that we in the UK are overreacting. Is there any sense that this is being overcautious, overreaction? Um, shall I answer that? Sure, I, th I think that um, we are not alone in being precautionary. Um, we know that other countries, um, you know, from as far apart as Israel um, to Australia, European countries, others have also um, taken these actions and, um, You'll have heard about Switzerland uh, this morning. So um, we are being precautionary because the science on this new variant will not be fully known for several weeks. We do know that in the area of South Africa where the um, variant was detected thanks to fantastic work by South African colleagues and uh, the genomic typing being so quick that um, they saw a tenfold increase in cases in a very short time, which is what prompted them to do this genetic analysis and then the, the variant was discovered and they were seeing younger people, particularly ones that had not been vaccinated, coming into hospital and going into ITUs. So I don't think that that is a mild illness, even though for most people who've had the vaccine, we expect that it will be good cross protection um, and particularly if they've had the booster. Thanks very much, Adrian. And uh, I think it's really important that we uh, use the precautionary principle while we don't understand this variant. So that's, uh, I think, our starting point. And uh, as a, a government, our first responsibility is to keep the people of Wales 
safe. We're very pleased that the UK government uh, have actually taken action much quicker than they did when uh, we saw what they did with the Delta variant. So that was something which was a welcome change from the UK government perspective. Uh, but we are uh, saddened that they didn't listen to us uh, when we told them that it would be a mistake to uh, take away the, the PCR tests when people were returning from abroad uh, and they introduced the uh, lateral flow test and we told them that that would make it more difficult for us to identify any new variants and it was a shame uh, that that wasn't heeded by the UK government. Uh, Dan Bevan. Thank you, Minister. Uh, good afternoon to you both. Uh, both of my questions are uh, more for yourself, Minister, but Dr Richardson, if, uh, if you feel like you've had anyth anything to add, then please uh, feel free to. Uh, the next restrictions review, as you mentioned, isn't until next Friday. But of course, if there are going to be any uh, new measures introduced, only a couple of weeks before Christmas, people will be uh, incredibly worried. It will echo uh, last year. So don't people deserve to know sooner rather than later if their plans are going to change? I understand what you say about that not knowing entirely about uh, the uh, the current variant that's uh, the, in other parts of the UK, but is it not true that you could have brought you could bring the, the restrictions review forward when that data is known? Um, we will bring in measures if we think it's it's important to do so. And you've seen uh, just today that we are introducing measures to make sure that uh, if people uh, do contract uh, Omicron, that they have a a responsibility to self-isolate along with their family members and anybody else that they've been in contact with. So uh, we don't wait for the 21-day review to uh, make urgent changes, which is what we're doing today and we've already done uh, over the weekend, obviously. Um, I, I absolutely understand that this is a really difficult time in particular for businesses who rely on Christmas for uh, a huge amount of their, their custom. And uh, we are very sensitive to that and we're sensitive to the fact that uh, they would like some clarity in terms of what the future looks like. We would love that clarity as well. The problem is we don't have that clarity at the moment. We have got to balance uh, the needs of keeping our people safe, making sure that the NHS is not overwhelmed with our responsibility to keeping uh, society open and the economy going. Uh, so all of those things are, are things that we will balance off uh, in the next 21-day review, but uh, we will not hesitate if we need to bring those measures forward earlier than the 21-day review. Thank you. And one education union has told us that closing schools early before Christmas or even extending the Christmas break in order to mitigate the spread of this new strain, it should only be used as a last resort measure. But considering how much learning has already been lost throughout the pandemic, is this a measure that you're con uh, considering ruling out altogether or can you rule it out altogether today? Um We've always said that we want to keep our schools open as long as possible. Uh, we are very aware of the damage that this can do to children to pull them out of school, the difficulties not just in terms of educational but mental health issues that can, uh, can be caused if we close schools. Um, so we will uh, do our utmost to, to try and keep those schools open, um, which is why we've introduced these measures of, of face coverings, not just in corridors but also in classrooms. Um, the, the key thing for, for us uh, also to remember is that actually we would like uh, our, uh, our children to uh, undertake tests next year. For every uh, day they miss off school, it's more difficult for us to continue with those tests. So that will be a call for the Education Minister, and I know he's keeping a very close eye on the situation. I think I would just add that the cases across Wales are uh, decreasing currently, Minister, and that's due to the fantastic efforts of the Welsh public and that people are um, abiding by the uh, guidance and the, the laws that require people to self-isolate and to uh, wear face coverings in public places. So it's really important that those continue and that, um, that we don't become complacent because those efforts are really having a good effect. Thanks. Mark Smith, Wales Online. Um, thank you very much indeed, both. Um, Cardiff Rugby are currently stuck in South Africa after the club returned to positive cases of COVID-19. Um, is the Welsh Government able to assist Cardiff in their attempts to leave South Africa in any way? Um, and are there any hotels in Wales able to accommodate them? Uh, thanks very much, Mark. Our primary responsibility is to keep the people of Wales safe. 
Uh, there are rules in place to make sure that that happens, and th those laws uh, are, are things that everybody needs to abide uh, by, uh, and there will be no, no exceptions to that. Um, we are very aware of the situation uh, with Cardiff Rugby Club. Um, there will be a need for them to self-isolate on their return. There are no uh, places in Wales where they can be accommodated because we don't have those hotels in Wales. There's a very clear reason for that. Uh, it is because uh, we, we don't have uh, an international airport that on the whole that brings in people from uh, red list countries or from, from potential red list countries. Most of our passengers land in England. Uh, we thought that it would uh, increase the health risk if we were to transport people from uh, an airport into a hotel in Wales. It's also very difficult uh, for us to uh, discuss and to find a hotel in Wales that may be willing to turn themselves into a COVID hotel because it means that they can't take anybody else. And obviously that's quite a big ask just before Christmas for a hotel when they may have many bookings. So we are keeping an eye on things and uh, obviously uh, we're very interested in bringing our boys home, uh, but they will have to come home in the same way as everybody else in this country uh, would be expected to come home. Thank you very much indeed. And secondly, um, in the event that cases and hospital admissions do increase as a result of this new variant, um, what would be the strategy of the Welsh Government in terms of the order in which COVID measures were introduced? Well, all of that has been set out very clearly in our control plan. So uh, if we do need to uh, increase the protection measures, then there is a, a very clear plan that we need to follow, uh, and that would start with the COVID urgent, and, and uh, we would need to look into the situation as to how quickly we'd, we would move up uh, through those different phases of the COVID plan. So th it's very clearly set out. We know what we need to do uh, if that needs arises. Uh, Andrew Forgrave. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Um, uh, given, uh, even accepting that there is a lot of uncertainty in the picture, uh, if people are to have a fairly uh, relatively normal Christmas, well, what precautions should they be taking? Should they have a, a lateral flow test, for example, uh, before meeting up with friends, before going to a Christmas party? Um, Jill, are you happy to Yeah, that? sure. So um, you can obtain lateral flow tests from most pharmacies and many places now. And I think particularly if you're going to meet up with people who are vulnerable or people who have um, risk factors, then that is just a precautionary thing um, to make sure that, that you're you know, not going to pass on anything to them. Obviously, um, a lot of young people will be socialising over this period and um, the LFTs are also available to them. Um, but I think, you know, rather than have a rule on this, we'll say to people, please be sensible. If you feel you're in an indoor environment or you've been in one, perhaps, um, and you, you've been in close contact with people that you couldn't guarantee that, that it was safe contact, then please, before you go and see your grandparents, you know, um, it's just precautionary. Um, make sure that your lateral flow test is negative. Thanks. Andrew? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think Moderna has said that the, uh, the, the uh, a, a, an Omicron Pacific vaccine is likely to be less effective against the previous variants. Um, given that, do, do you envisage a time when we might be having to have double vaccination, in other words, for Omicron and another for other variants? So... Um, we have good experience of this, um, Andrew, with um, the flu vaccine, that every year the flu vaccine has to be tweaked um, according to whatever variants are circulating. Uh, and then those uh, are a match, if you like, for, for that year's circulating variants. And I imagine that we will probably get to that place, um, although it's very new, COVID vaccination, I don't think that it's going to go away. I think we probably may be settling into hopefully an annual cycle. 
and the vaccine will be looked at uh, each year to make sure that the circulating variants are reflected in the vaccine. But it's all very new technology and our vaccine manufacturers and developers have really been working at pace to, to uh, keep up so far and have managed to um, do a great deal um, so far. And, and we really do trust that um, that scientific apparatus, if you like, that um, is in place for other vaccines can be applied to COVID. Thanks very much. Harry Hansen. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to you both. My question are, are for the Health Minister. Um, with the new rules announced today that anyone who comes into contact with a positive case will have to isolate for 10 days, mm -hmm. this is likely to lead to more of our school children being off for extended periods of time like we saw earlier on in the year. So how is the government planning to safeguard education? Uh, thanks very much, Harry. L look, we're in a situation here where we're just trying to slow everything down. So if we see uh, somebody who's contracted uh, the Omicron variant, it makes perfect sense to us to ask anybody around them at this point in time to uh, self-isolate along with any other contacts. Uh, that's how we will slow it down initially. Um, it may be that, that later on, if and when this becomes the dominant variant, we may need to tweak that situation. But for the time being, uh, we are asking people who come into contact with the Omicron variant to self-isolate, to take their responsibility seriously to uh, their, their fellow uh, Welsh citizens uh, and to make sure that we try and uh, try, try and really control this, this variant as much as we can for as long as we can. Thank you. And I suppose following on from that as well, um, if the new variant is um, discovered to be um, less effective with the vaccine, how confident can the government be that the school term won't be affected and that school closures won't have to come back? We can't be totally certain, but we know that and we expect that the vaccine will have good cross reactivity so that the vaccine that's been developed for um, the circulating strains so far, um, they uh, were quite effective against the Delta variant at two doses. And we expect that they'll be effective against the Omicron variant. But we are really being precautionary and making sure that we can give everybody that's eligible their booster before any wave in keeping with JCVI's request. So um, we're not anticipating, uh, you know, the school age children will be offered their second vaccine for secondary school now. Uh, and so that will be given at least 12 weeks after their, their last dose. So really, we should be giving maximum protection to that group too. 